Thank you very much. Um, I, I feel I'm a, I'm a fraud because um, I keep thinking that our company is uh, a service company, but uh, the service we provide requires us to sell things. So we sell things. And it's very specialized and very high tech. And I, I must apologize. I think I have to explain a little about the company to get you to understand what we're trying to sell in China. And um, uh, it's about problem solving. We solve sort of microbiological problems uh, in industry. And that, that is the sort of mission statement of the, uh, of the company. Um, we've been involved in China since uh, 2006. What does our company do? The, um, although, we're, although we're an SME, and I, I think we've got 14 people at the moment, I think we happen to be the biggest independent industrial microbiology company in the world, which is very strange, living in Cardiff. Very specialized in what we do, and we, we have an expertise in the microbes which grow in fuels and lubricants, and a few other things as well. But not many people know that bugs grow in fuels and lubricants. And when they do so, they don't do it very often, when they do so, there's a massive slimy growth there, which is uh, plugs up filters, plugs up pipelines, uh, causes bearings to run, et cetera, and it's a disastrous uh, state of affairs. So we've got a particular specialization uh, in microbes growing in fuels and lubes. And um, this is because the, uh, when I was uh, on the staff at the university, um, I started to do research in this, which nobody else was doing. And it's very easy to be a world expert when nobody else is doing it. Uh, and we acquired an expertise which we haven't lost uh, since. So who are we providing our services to? It's the, it's the, the biggies of this world. The, um, uh, the big oil companies, the BPs, the Exxon Mobiles, uh, the airlines, the power stations, all of these are blue chip companies and unfortunately we're not down at the bottom end of the, of the market. And what are we trying to sell them? We're trying to sell them problem solving and problem solving uh, it's got four elements to it, and uh, this is consultancy. Uh, we have a laboratory where we uh, test samples, and we do uh, R&D, uh, and importantly, we develop uh, microbiological test kits, which people can use on site. And we also provide training courses, so we provide training courses for um, Airbus, for example, for uh, the big um, uh, petroleum companies, uh, and all of this is the package which we sell because we're trying to solve somebody's uh, microbiological problems. We try to keep a very high technical profile by becoming involved in uh, the international technical committees. Uh, we get involved in uh, um, drafting standard test methods, uh, guidelines, etc. Um, just to explain what we're trying to sell there to do with fuels and lubricants, um, what are microbes doing with fuels and lubricants? They actually grow in traces of water, and if you think that uh, I don't suppose anybody here has actually seen for many years what they put in their car. How much water is in the fuel, or how much else, else is in the fuel. And there are always traces of water in the fuel, and microbes start to grow in this trace of water. Then they, they are surfactant piece and they can spread up into the fuel, and so from there they can plug up the filters, etc. So they grow in the, uh, the traces of water associated with the fuels and lubes. They degrade the hydrocarbons, so they must have the biochemical ability to uh, chew up the hydrocarbons and the additives, and these cause the things to malfunction, and um, uh, any additives which we put in there. And unfortunately, nowadays, we're, we're very good at putting additives in without thinking about it, and we have a whole mass of problems at the moment with biofuels, because nobody actually sat down and thought that putting coconut oil and things like this and chip fat into fuel would make it very, very nourishing for microorganisms. So, and the, expense, the um, consequences are very expensive. Uh, aircraft won't take up, take off, power stations won't run, ships won't go, et cetera, very, very expensive. Fuel starvation, engine malfunction, bearing failures, corrosion, et cetera, all caused by this massive growth of uh, microorganism. What does it look like? Um, this is a sample out of an aircraft drain. This is jet fuel, and this should look like distilled water, crystal clear distilled water, and this is what we took out of the aircraft. Now, this is a severe operational problem, obviously. What we're always interested in is detecting the onset of growth at a very early stage so that we can stop this problem develop, developing uh, before it gets to this stage. So that's a, an aircraft fuel sample. This is a, um, um, a cargo tank on a ship. And uh, you may not know, but we've got lots and lots of ships 
moored around the UK with cargoes of jet fuel on, waiting for the price to go up. And this is what can happen in these cargoes. This is um, a, a lube oil, a big um, uh, lubricating oil system, and you can put your hands in and bring up the slimy growth in the lube oil. I once estimated we had six tons of bacteria in a big lube oil system. Sorry for the te technical bits, but what are, the, what are microbes? Well, we've got three kinds. We've got the bacteria, we've got the yeast, and we've got the molds there. They all look a bit different. They all do more or less the same thing. And the ones which we're interested in have all got this ability to degrade hydrocarbons. Many others grow with them because these produce some intermediate products and the, the rest of the crowd uh, feed on the degraded, on the, uh, degraded products there. And uh, there may be a whole mixture of these there, uh, all doing the little bit in this, um, this fouling and spoilage problem. The fly in the ointment, which we were well aware of for many, many years, was that you had to send your samples to a laboratory to find out what had gone wrong with it. And there are very few laboratories capable of doing this technically, and very few, in, when you get into Indonesia and the Far East, etc., there are very few uh, out there at all. So it takes you two weeks to get a sample, a few days to do the test, and by the time we got the uh, result back, it was miles too late. Until 2002, when uh, we developed the, the first on-site test, the first quantitative on-site test which could detect, detect these microbes in the fuel and lubricant. And um, I always think that this, this was, um, it was, it was so stupid, and I couldn't believe that people hadn't thought of it before. Uh, nevertheless, we had some inspiration in this, and the inspiration was a bottle of tomato sauce. And that bottle of tomato sauce is worth millions of pounds. Because I started to think, well, olive oil is emulsified in tomato sauce, and so could jet fuel or lube oil. And from my own experience, I'd uh, tried to make tomato sauce, and what happened? It fermented. So I knew that it could grow microorganisms. So from the bottle of tomato sauce, we developed an on-site test for bugs in lubes and fuel. So it's a very funny story, but uh, that's how it all developed there. Okay, how do we do this test? We've really taken some of the ingredients here, put a few more uh, goodies with them, and um, produce this little on-site test. I'll just show you what it looks like. That is what we actually sell, and that's a, a, a box of five tests. And the test is just a small bottle, uh, some uh, devices in there to, um, uh, to measure the amount of fuel which you're putting in there. So that's what we're actually selling. And uh, how do we actually do it? You take our little uh, test bottle, which is is there. You measure your fuel in, or whatever it is, into this test bottle. You shake it like mad, and just like tomato sauce, it liquefies. And as it liquefies, it disperses the fuel or the lube uh, throughout the gel, which we've got there. And this is a very, very nice uh, nutrient gel, and it grows microbes very, very nicely there. So we shake it like mad. It all liquefies, it all emulsifies into the test, and uh, we then allow it to reset in a, a flat layer. Uh, we keep it nice and warm. We've got all sorts of goodies in there. And what happens, wherever we had one microbe stuck into this uh, gel here, keep it warm, and we now have a little splodges of microbes in this, and we just count them. And each little splodge is equivalent to one microbe in the sample, so it's quantitative test. So um, from the tomato sauce, we have developed this um, test for microorganisms. Okay, so. Uh, just uh, another little bit on this. It's fairly obvious. You don't have to be a microbiologist. You can do this in your office. You can do it in your aircraft hangar. You can do it in your power station, whatever it is. You don't have to be a microbiologist. All you have to do is to look at the, the results, and you know that that's very heavily contaminated, and that's not contaminated at all, and that's just starting to be contaminated. And then once you've got a test, you can then start to put standards in and say, that, that is acceptable, that's dodgy, that's awful. And this is now our, our, our best-selling test kit. So that's why I said that's a, a multi-million pound bottle of tomato sauce there. Uh, we, we won all sorts of uh, industry awards, including one which we were very proud of, which was for the most innovative product or process in the petroleum industry worldwide. They drunk that night. 
And the key is that for the first time, people did not have to send samples to the laboratory. So you have an educational job, first of all, to say, okay, you, you don't have to do it the old way anymore. You've got a method now, you can actually do it yourself on site. And there was an educational uh, task, but we were very fortunate that IATA, International Air Transport Association, which is the technical organization for the airlines, uh, as well as being a commercial organization, they were being lobbied by all the airlines and saying, look, our aircraft is suffering from this problem, the bugs and the fuel there. Uh, we're having flame outs, we're having loss of power on takeoff, et cetera. Nobody is actually tackling this. So IATA put together a, a working group, which we were on, and uh, we worked out very quickly, really, um, how to use our test uh, for uh, aircraft fuel. And um, IATA published uh, guidelines, which are taken up by the aviation industry. So all airlines now have um, IATA guidelines, which tell you about the microbial problem in fuel and uh, how to test for it and uh, how to uh, uh, deal, deal with it if you've got the contamination there. So. Uh, and then this is taken up by Boeing, Airbus, em Embraer, you name it. Um, all of the major uh, aircraft builders have got their maintenance manuals with the uh, uh, repeating the IATA guidance for uh, testing and dealing with uh, microbes and fuel. Long, long story, I'm afraid. Okay, and in that, they set the, set the standard. So uh, aircraft fuel has to be very, very clean because of the amount you burn. So we set standards in there, and the better standards for drinking water. We need less bugs in aircraft fuel than we do in drinking water. And uh, they set the standards, and these are published. So in this, you will find the, uh, uh, that number is okay, that number is not, that number is dreadful, and it tells you what to do at the different standards there. Um, of course, the same applies to other fuels, for diesel fuel, for biodiesel, a little bit for gasoline, but not much, uh, for marine fuels, etc. So the same principle applies to other fuels, but um, these are rather more parochial, so different companies have their different standards for diesel fuel, for marine diesel, etc. The aviation industry is different. We've got a universal standard across the aviation industry. And a lot, not a lot of people know this, but any aircraft you fly on will have a microbiological test on the fuel. How often? You assess the risk. And if it's a high-risk aircraft, for example, can't mention names, but operating in, say, um, South Africa or South, places in South America, you will test fairly frequently. If it's a low-risk aircraft, something going from Heathrow to Munich, uh, you will test maybe every year or something like that. So every aircraft you fly on will have a microbiological test. Okay, so that's, that's the, um, the, the, the breakthrough, was to get the test and get it into the aviation industry and get it accepted. And once you got it there, of course, as far as we were concerned as a company, uh, in a way you're laughing. Because the first thing the aviation, the airlines do is they turn around and say, hang on, look to our suppliers. We wouldn't have this problem unless you started to supply us with some contaminated fuel in the first place. So the pressure then went on to the suppliers and then the suppliers picked it up and it's the same thing is happening in diesel fuel, et cetera. So the breakthrough was getting it into the aviation industry and it, the same sort of um, uh, logic now, uh, on-site testing is, is world, worldwide, China, I'll reserve a bit, but uh, it's virtually worldwide and it's um, uh, for all kinds of fuel, fuel in production, distribution, storage, uh, and in use. Plus I say lubricating oils, et cetera, and a few other bits and pieces, but uh, okay. Now, the easy bit, as far as we're concerned, is having done all this sort of spade work there, and we go, uh, every three months we go to an IATA technical meeting where we keep people up to date and briefed, et cetera. But you don't actually have to sell there because this is, is mandating what you do. It's, it mentions the test by, by name. I should say that a couple of competitors come in since then, but you, we don't actually have to do much selling there because it's mandated by IATA. So you merely are, are supplying to a demand there. Selling to the other markets, like the lube oils and the marine diesels, this requires a great deal of technical input. And this is the difficult market, it's the same market, but it requires a, a much more technical input, a knowledge of the industry, uh, because you have to know what the effect is on ship's engines and uh, uh, power station lubricants, et cetera. 